you guys so I was just coming in to do a deep clean of the tank for the first time since we moved because I finally have the new supplies and I went to move a couple of the infertile eggs that my girls have laid again and then I found this I think that I currently need to leave Maya alone it appears that she is laying an egg right at this second. Oh my gosh. I did not anticipate that. She is not, uh, these eggs are never fertile because Mello is not a fertile male. They never go through the interaction of mating. But this does happen from time to time. When I have females, they will actively lay eggs. So I'm gonna get out of here in just a second. But this is a really amazing specimen spotlight to show you guys really quickly. I am, uh, there's no moss because I threw the old moss away. I came over to throw like new moss on and clean up the tank and <laughs> Maya is laying an egg right now. I don't even have your box yet. They normally get little boxes they can dig in to do this. So we're going to get out of the way and not disturb her. But don't worry, these eggs are infertile. They always are. My girls uh, never lay fertile eggs. I don't breed my geckos at the moment. These are all rescue geckos as it is. <laughs> I need to get them more tanks. Oh my goodness. I'm not a great gecko keeper just yet, but this was really surprising. I have never seen this in all of the years I have taken care of them. So I will clean this up and we will get some more gecko time when the tank looks a little bit better and when Maya is done with this, but oh my gosh. Okay, I don't want to disturb her anymore because she is way not needing my, my attentions and my stressing right now. But I wanted to show you guys just really quickly. There she is. So she has actually laid two eggs. She has another egg hiding down there on the bottom. You can't really see it. But I have never caught them right in the process of laying an egg before. And we're going to gently hide her again. But yeah, I was coming in to kind of clean everything. It's been a really hectic move and I was getting the tank set up with fresh moss and everything again. And yeah, that surprised me. So you guys, Maya just, just, just laid that egg. That is so amazing. And yes, it is infertile. Mellow, the male that I have, has never tried to breed with them before for four or five years since I've had them. And he has always, I've always checked the eggs. They're always infertile. And my girls tend to lay uh, infertile eggs every now and then too, but I've never caught them at it. So we're going to leave her be and give her a bit of privacy and some time to relax. But that's very interesting. And I'll take the eggs out and show them off to you guys uh, in a little bit. Because again, they're always infertile. They're never going to turn into baby geckos. And I will make sure that we get some clean moss in here. I'm actually ordering another tank soon so that my three geckos, we had to get rid of a couple of my tanks when we moved. That's why they're all in here right now. Normally, even these big exoterras, you want to only have like one or maybe two females in. Again, Mellow, he's kind of a female. <laughs> he's never showed interest in mating with them before. Look at that egg. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. But uh, yeah, I'm getting new tanks in and I'm getting all sorts of new decoration pieces and I'm going to be doing like bioactive tanks where they're going to have uh, almost like a terrarium totally live and have all the plants and it's going to be really awesome for the geckos. But that's just a really cool little surprise discovery. That little egg right there. Well, I'm going to let her rest and then I will finish putting the moss in and I will show you guys what they look like in a little bit. All right, there we go. Now we have the tank looking a lot better. It's freshly scrubbed. We have the plants put up into the, the background. There's only a few plants right now. Normally I like to have a few more spots like uh, twigs, branches, things for my geckos to climb up and down. But I threw out a lot of the old ones during our move because I knew I would be buying some new ones that would be nice and clean. And it's just good to replace all of those every few months or at least every year if you can, if they're still in like decent condition they can last that long so I only have a few plants in here and then one of their favorites toilet paper roll they absolutely adore those in fact I wouldn't put it past it oh yeah look at that I see a little gecko foot in fact I think there's two geckos there's two geckos in here so there's Maya's tail and there's a Mello's face so I'll let those two nap in there they love toilet paper rolls they really really do and then Midna who laid the eggs we'll be looking at in just a second is actually hiding up here so they're all sound asleep because it's only about 4 p.m. in the afternoon where I'm at right now and crested geckos are nocturnal so that means that they like to snooze the day away that's why my birds are making so much noise it's daytime so the birds are awake and when the birds fall asleep that's 
that's when my geckos wake up, which is just a really cool trade-off that my animals do. But you guys saw something very spectacular last night because you saw Midna laying some eggs, and I have never seen that before. So Midna is my frog butt gecko. She's this one right here, and she actually does not have a tail. And that happens sometimes with crested geckos where they will actually toss their tail. That's what it's called, and then they become frog butt because they look like they have a little rump just like a frog. And their tails don't grow back. There's some gecko and lizard species where they will regrow their tail, like a Nolis, for instance, if they toss their tail. But her tail just won't grow back. Usually, crested geckos, like my other two, still have their tails. Usually, they're pretty good about not tossing their tail. But one day, Binda just decided she had enough of it. She may have landed funny. She may have been startled by something. Maybe, like, one of her, her female cage mates at the time decided to nibble at her tail, which I doubt. Binda just... Mind is a little bit... Mm, she's stubborn, so I imagine she maybe jumped at something and decided to take a miss with maybe some of the leaves and start fighting with them, and she threw her tail at them, and that's why she doesn't have a tail. But I found it and had to throw it out, but she's fine. It healed up just fine. But crested gecko females will sometimes lay eggs, and these eggs are always infertile because none of my, my one male is actually infertile. He's never in his seven years of life, when paired with females, been able to bring a fertile egg about. But she laid the eggs down here. You can see the moss balls that I have. Now they're properly covered with moss, and it's really nice and humid in here when you reach in now. I can feel the humidity on my skin when I wave my hand around here because the moss balls are very damp and they hold moisture in this tank. So the geckos are very happy because it's much more like the tropical environment they're used to. But Minna was laying her eggs down here when we saw her last night, and there they are. And she tried to bury them inside the moss balls. And usually my geckos will have a lay box, that's what the girls get, with some dirt inside of it. So if they want to lay some infertile eggs, because my girls tend to lay a couple eggs every three months or so. One, like, so I usually find eggs like every other month between two females. But they will lay these little eggs. And let's go ahead and pull one out. And like I said, they're always infertile. But they'll just kind of get into their head to lay these eggs. And <laughs> I think it's amazing. Look at this tiny thing. And here it is. So it's an infertile egg. That means if I held it up to a pen line, I would put all of my money on the fact that this would be completely empty. There's nothing inside of it. Maybe a yolk, but not a fertilized one. So it just sort of floats around. Kind of like when birds lay eggs, uh, like chicken eggs, for instance, are infertile eggs. There's no embryo, no baby inside of the egg. It's just an egg that the females lay because they are goofballs like that sometimes. And my geckos tend to lay them, like I said, I can usually find a pair of eggs. I found a pair of eggs last night that apparently Maya had laid since we moved. And Midna laid this fresh pair while we were watching. You can see they're still in great shape because they haven't dried out because they have been down inside of the moss and staying at a good humidity and temperature. But they'll lay these eggs every few months and then I'll take them out. And usually they have a lay box so that they don't have to dig around in the moss balls. They have a nice soft little patch of dirt they can bury them in. And it's just going through kind of their natural behaviors and motions. I try not to, I wish they wouldn't lay eggs because it does stress their calcium sacs out a little bit. But they're doing okay. They're doing okay. It's just a thing that happens with female crested geckos. It's not as exciting with my birds because there's never any, any baby geckos hiding inside of these. But they're a beautiful pair of eggs, indicating that her diet's pretty good, her calcium sac is pretty good. So good job, Midna. She was hiding them inside. They always lay them in twos. Seeing a regular shape like this is a good indicator that she's getting enough calcium and she's getting enough of her nutrients from her disgusting looking gecko food. I'm going to be cleaning this out. It just got filled up and it just looks nasty after a day. But it's just like, that's just like pureed cricket and... Um, some fruit and some other really healthy things for them from this awesome gecko diet, powdered gecko diet that I get online. And it looks like she's getting enough of all the nutrients she needs because these eggs are the perfect shape and they'll sit inside of her right next to each other like this and she'll always lay two of them at a time. And I wish that they had little geckos in them because then I could have more little crusty geckos. But that's okay, because I don't need more little crusty geckos. These guys are actually rescues as it is. But I've rambled about this long enough. Oh, and then just like some facts really quickly. 
Not only do the females tend to lay infertile eggs pretty often, but if these eggs were fertile, then what's really interesting with crested gecko eggs is that you can put them into the incubator, and in warmer temperatures, they will hatch as early as 60 to 70 days. But I have read of breeders putting them in cooler temperatures to try to adjust for gender. There is some thought that maybe you can influence what gender the crested geckos might turn out to be if you can affect the temperature. So far, I've seen opinions varying all over the place about that, but if you're going to try to adjust temperature to try to get more males or more females, some people have made crested gecko eggs hatch as long as 120 days after they were laid, so twice the length of the 60 days that they can hatch in in warmer temperatures. So you can hatch them in slightly cooler temperatures, not too cold, but cooler, and then they'll hatch after like 120 days because they'll develop slower. But I think that's just amazing because it's so different compared to mammalian pregnancy and the way that mammalian million embryos grow so that's really cool but all right I'm gonna leave my crusty geckos alone now as you can see they have retreated into their tube Mello's like no I don't want to be looked at and Midna's still napping so I'm gonna steal her eggs and keep them as some interesting specimens to share with you guys and that wraps up another specimen spotlight so if you guys are curious about my crusty geckos especially about the fact we are going to be um, decorating their tank and making it really nice and getting them more tanks and just really making them extremely spoiled then be sure to check out the vlog channel and keep out an eye for future specimen spotlights because I'm definitely going to be doing more with them in the future and if you guys want to see them sooner than that like when they eat off the little spoon when I mix up their food or just when they hunt crickets that's pretty cool then let me know and I will share more of these guys with you later so bye Minna thanks for the little eggs